baby monster just debuted but literally where are they i've literally never heard of this k-pop group called Blackpink? I have no Asian Music Awards recap, but did Kepler copy Itzy's stage? Espa Karina's skirt is too short, allegedly. My Spotify wrapped, and so much more in today's episode of Totally Legit K pop News with me, Angelina. There's no sun out, that's why there's a shadow. I don't want to hear it. But if you're interested in any of these subjects, please keep on watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with friends you don't have. I also have a second channel, everything, resources, links below. And as always, feel free to skip through to whatever subject interests you the most. Oh. Okay, so of course, Baby Monster just made their debut not too long ago, and they're already naturally breaking records. So here we have it. Baby Monster breaks Blackpink record in first day of debut. I mean, I would hope so. That was seven years ago. You would hope things don't stay stagnant, right? Despite a lukewarm reception in Korea, the song shot to first place on iTunes in 21 countries and placed top five on the worldwide chart. We also got 22.6 million views in 24 hours, breaking the record for K-pop debuts and overtaking Blackpink's debut record. Now, of course, naturally, this debut has not come without criticism, which of course is also to be expected. They're from one of the biggest companies. They're following Blackpink's footsteps, non-derogatory. I know there are a lot of young fans who say like, why compare them to Blackpink? Pink fit their own group. I mean, this is this is the world. Of course, there's going to be comparisons. Now, of course, I've done a whole deep dive into their debut in its own separate video. If you'd like to check that out, I will link it. However, people are now seemingly worried because it seems there's a clear lack of promotions for the group, despite the fact that they just debuted. Despite the fact that this is literally one of the most anticipated debuts of the decade. Baby Monster's glaring lack of promotion sparked speculation around Ahyun. So, of course, to catch you up if you're not caught up already, it was announced that she would not be debuting with the group. So, there's still some room for her to join later on because she wasn't kicked out of YG Entertainment as far as we know. She wasn't even necessarily kicked out of the group as far as we know. Now, when it comes to statements from big companies, you believe what you want at this point, right? Something she will come back, something she won't come back. But anyways, there was a post that went viral that was titled, I can't understand YG's rookie group Baby Monsters promotions post debut. Where of course they're basically noting the lack of promotions that this group has. YG's rookie group Baby Monster recently debuted. They were highly anticipated as they were from YG. One of K-pop's big four labels, but they aren't being promoted other than through the release of their song and music video. It is to the point that people are asking if this was their official debut. I know I've seen a lot of people asking, is this a pre-debut song? But technically it's not. Technically Dream was their pre-debut song with this being the official debut, though it doesn't really feel like it. Now the post goes on to say that the members don't have their own social media accounts and they aren't on Weverse. Member Twitters doesn't exist. Members Weverse accounts doesn't exist. Then YG must be promoting their music, right? Articles, press releases, and showcases doesn't exist. Music show schedules doesn't exist. Them continuing to say it's easy to find comments asking if this was the group's official debut or if it was just their pre-debut. But this is bad even for pre-debuts. Competition between fourth generation girl groups is cutthroat, so most fans are wondering what the label is thinking. This is leading a lot of people to believe that they're actually waiting for Ahyun to return. Then they might put more effort into it. So here's what some Canadians think of the situation. It feels like YG Entertainment was forced to debut them. Them. They did debut, right? Makes me think this was a teaser. You know Ahyun? If she couldn't debut because she was sick, don't you think they are waiting for her? It looks like they will really start promoting the group when she returns. If that's not why, I don't understand why the label isn't promoting them after the group's debut. They debuted? I think YG Entertainment is testing the waters, lol. If the response to the group's debut is good, YG will promote them. And if it isn't good, they will wait for Ahyun, lol. But YG has always been like a boutique shop, Psy. I feel bad for them. Looking at the responses here, I'm not sure that the 30 million views means that much. It's amazing people even watched it that many times. Girl groups need to perform to get a stronger response. But it's so frustrating that the group hasn't even released a performance video. So this, of course, has left a lot of people to wonder if they're waiting for Ahyun to make her return. Because otherwise, why would you make this very anticipated debut just a digital release? And on top of that, release it on a random Sunday at 10 a.m. And on top of that, not really promote it either. And also not have any concrete plans for any music show performances as of now. Because it seems YG also informed the news that they have no plans as of now for any music broadcasting. There is no fixed schedule for Baby Monster's music broadcast appearances 
yet detailed plans for the group will be announced as they are finalized with a focus on preparing promotions and follow-up tracks so given all these details it would make sense if they were waiting for her right because it does feel like it was rushed a little bit to an extent and there's even people noticing that there's some spaces left for her within some of the choreography so here we see some screenshots and it's circled where they think ahyun would have been here's another one some people do seem to be skeptical of this however i honestly don't think she'll come back yep op delulu is the salulu we've all been there <laughs> I remember when Ginny left Enmix, I used these tactics to gaslight myself. It wasn't a good idea. I think they just didn't have time to change the choreography. I honestly doubt she's going to join them. It looks less like they are saving a spot for her and more like they prepared the choreo with her and had to improvise after she opted out. More like the formation was not rearranged due to YG's laziness. The music video looks cheap since it's a reshoot. I will say, you know, maybe she could come back. I don't think this is particularly evidence because I also will say I made a video a couple years like in 2019 that went viral and it was basically blackpink's fifth invisible member <laughs> and it was just like a compilation of blackpink having space for somebody else that wasn't there and this was well into their career so it's not like we could have assumed there was a fifth member that randomly dropped out at debut and then do you know what i mean so i'm personally not going to hold my breath but i would love to know what you think about that this next story I think is super relatable because a lot of us didn't know who Blackpink were before King Charles gave those girlies a shout out. King Charles really paved the way. <laughs> At least that's what the Daily Mail thinks, who has of course been called out for their coverage of Blackpink in a recent article. British newspaper under fire for misogynistic and offensive coverage of Blackpink. So we have a little bit of a content warning here. I won't dive too much into it myself, but I did read the article and I'll give you guys a little bit of a recap if you didn't want to read it yourself. Kind of like, you know, too long to didn't read it was a, it wasn't the longest thing ever but the thing is this article even with the tweet promoting it starts off with the most wild claim you'd probably never heard of korean k-pop sensations blackpink before the king honored them but here we reveal how starvation diets daily weigh-ins and huge pressure to have plastic surgery have left a dark spectra behind the world's biggest girl band so i he, that facial expression was because I complain all the time that my camera never tells me how much time I have left on the memory card and then it just says, oh, four minutes left. <gasps> four minutes left. That was stupid as hell. I'm not even recording the audio. In my opinion, it feels like this article is directed specifically to what they think the UK thinks. Like they think the entirety of the UK have no idea what K-pop is. This is the vibe that I get from the article. <laughs> wow, I've never heard of K-pop except for Gangnam Style back in 2012. So surely you all who are reading this have never heard of Blackpink either. I've also personally heard that the English are very sarcastic. So maybe it's literally all a joke. You know, like you probably have never heard of the biggest girl group in the whole entire world until King Charles shouted them out. Like that feels like a joke to me right right which interestingly you know what uh, granted i'm not in the uk which also i'd like to clarify that i mean no harm in saying uk i swear i'm not ignorant it's just that the url says .co.uk but i'll be honest i don't know if i'm addressing the entirety of the uk so i apologize in advance but girly i'm in a country where these k-pop idols are not coming to so technically the uk should know more about k-pop than here just saying but even my hairdresser knows who blackpink is but anyways i did read the article so let's go through it now now, immediately as the article starts it is a lot of praise you know talking about blackpink's accomplishments oh my god the amount of ads i cannot but then they hit us with this you may not have heard of blackpink or their k-pop music style best known for gangnam style the 2012 viral dance hit song by rapper Psy. <laughs> as it hasn't properly taken off in Britain. What Britain are you living in? Because as far as I know, everybody goes to London. But I don't know, everybody whose countries are neglected by K-pop world tours, let me know your sentiments <laughs> in the comments down below. I mean, clearly whoever wrote this is stuck in 2012, not in the same way that I'm stuck in 2012. 2011, 2012, truly K-pop's golden years, but that's not important right now. But anyways, they go on to imply that UK audiences or maybe even to an extent European audiences, I'm not sure. But they kind of imply that their audience wouldn't 
have interest in Blackpink because it's a cross between pop, rap, and R&B with lyrics in Korean and English. It appeals more to American and Asian audiences with a cutesy image heavily marketed towards teenage fans. Now, okay, that's one thing. Dissect that however you want. But we go from they have such a cutesy image that is more directed towards American and Asian audiences, kind of excluding European audiences. That's what I get from it. To then this. Look online and you'll see pictures of the four young women who posed modestly at Buckingham Palace with mini skirts and suspenders, latex platform boots, and provocative music videos. That's not even the worst of it because in a paragraph below, they literally call them raunchy. This raunchy look is part of a carefully curated image. But a couple paragraphs earlier, they're literally implying that they have a cutesy image that is directly targeted towards teens. So is it a cutesy image or is it a provocative image? But they also claim that BTS disbanded for their military service. So I don't really know. <laughs> However, this wouldn't be a proper K-pop article if we didn't mention the dark side of K-pop. So they bring in a former trainee who shares her experiences, of course, long training hours, very controlled lifestyle. And then of course we dive into the body image issues, which I think, you know, of course they merit their criticisms. They do reference Momo of Twice, that infamous clip of her talking about how she had to lose seven kg and her mentioning that she was only eating ice cubes, how she was scared she wasn't going to wake up if she lied down. Then we move on to plastic surgery, which they say is quite common. Now they do say that Blackpink didn't admit to having any work done, but they do say that it seems that they had very dramatic transformations. So when we get into more of the harshness it is to become an idol, of course, to make mention of Jung Hyun Sully and Hara before they end off with the line. However, for the billions of Blackpink admirers, the K-pop pack lead a lifestyle that is glamorous and gilded, although the road to get there is anything but. This is, of course, just my summary of the article, but let me know what you think. So here are a couple of responses. Bringing women down, the misogyny. Just disgusting, misogynistic, and full-on xenophobic. But are we shocked the Daily Mail wrote this? So weird and disgusting. This screams misogyny. Like, y'all can't let women be successful in the industry without trying to bring them down in the process. Bitter and clout chasing. Pick a struggle. Of course, as always, I think there are things that are worth criticizing. But this article is just weird because on one hand, they're saying that this image is so cutesy that it's more geared towards American and Asian audiences. But in the next paragraph, they're calling Blackpink's image raunchy. So it's just a little confusing. The 2023 Emna Asian Music Awards, or as we know it as MAMA, spanned over two days in two different countries, so let's do a little bit of a recap and talk about some prominent events. Starting off with people not even knowing that it was happening, the shockingly negative reactions from international fans towards the 2023 MAMA Awards. You know how people get mad when someone says like naan bread or chai tea? I'm just saying MAMA Awards? Emna Asian Music Awards Awards? Has the event lost its spark? 2000... <laughs> 2000... <laughs> I won't say it. So the first thing is people were really confused, especially why is it spanning across two days and we really didn't have any idea it was happening now? Nobody knew Mama was happening today. People just finding out Mama is today just shows how far they fell off as an award show. Mama used to be an event. It's a gif. Mama used to be so huge with so much hype and I didn't even know this year's Mama is literally today. Mama and other award shows started to get boring when third gen stopped attending, which also meant real time reactions and interactions also stopped. So let me know, did you know Mama was happening? I personally had it on my calendar, but let's check out the list of winners from day one and day two. So culture and style award went to Street Woman Fighter 2. Worldwide Fans Choice went to TXT and BTS and Zero Base One and in Hypen and Im Young-un and 80s and NCT Dream and Stray Kids 17 twice. It's a... I don't super see the point of it, but it's fine. Favorite new artist went to Rise, Zero Base... How are you making so many people win this? Favorite Asian male group, Inny. Inspiring Achievement went to TVXQ. Galaxy Neo Flip artists went to Treasure. Favorite international artists went to Yoshiki. Favorite Asian female group went to Kepler. Worldwide icon of the year, of course, to BTS. And then, of course, we have day two. Culture and Style Award, 17. I'm No, I'm not saying 17 don't deserve this. Don't look into it. I just was reading the next one. Best new male artist, Zero Base One. What was the other one then? What did we just literally see from day one? Favorite new artist, 
versus best new male artist. Oh, this is why um, Mama fell off. They're just confusing as hell. Best new female artist went to Triple S. Best dance performance male group went to Seventeen with Super. Best dance performance female solo went to Blackpink's Tissue with Flower. Favorite dance performance. What? <laughs> so we have best dance performance, then favorite dance performance went to Treasure. Favorite global performer female group. G Idol, Best Vocal Performance Group, Angmu, Lovely, Akmu. I heard hidden from New Jeans pronounced it Angmu, so that's what I'm saying. Whatever New Jeans says goes. Best Male Group, 17. Best Vocal Performance Solo, Pak Jung. Favorite Global Performer Group? I didn't think they were nominated for performance. 80s. Best Female Artist, Blackpink's Jisoo. Best Dance Performance Male Solo, Jungkook 7. Best Collaboration, Jungkook 7 featuring Lado. Best female group, New Jeans. Best dance performance female group, New Jeans with Ditto. Best OST, BTS The Planet. Best rap and hip hop, August D featuring IU, People Part 2. Best music video. <gasps> Cover that immediately. That's an SBS photo, Korea Boo. You're trying to get me in trouble here. Why does Korea Boo get to post this photo and I get 47 copyright claims by SBS in the span of two days, three years ago? <laughs> I've been careful, that's why it hasn't happened again. Because I'm diligent. I smell SBS a mile away. But why does Koreabu get away with it? I cried when that happened. <laughs> Sorry, Jisoo, you look beautiful, but girly, I'm not trying to get in trouble again. Song of the year, New Jeans Ditto, deserved. Favorite dance performance female group, Le Seraphim. Best male artist, BTS Jimin. Artist of the year, New Jeans. I'm, okay. Of course, deserved. I just feel like a lot of these categories are quite redundant. Album of the year, 17's FML. So let me know your thoughts on all of these winners. And most importantly, what do you think of MAMA Awards? The Emna Asian Music Awards. Now I do want to take a look at the red carpet outfits just a little bit because I saw Rise. And I was like, who, who dressed poor Sung Tan? Because that was something. And I just want to take a look for fun. Let's take a look at the people we know. Boy Next Door. They're in suits. L's up. They're in dresses. Oh, they're on theme, I guess. Ooh, Niju. We got a little bit of some differences here. Looks a little interesting. 17. Okay. Ooh, zero base one added some pops of blue. ATs. Okay. <gasps> Suyong. Hello. La Seraphim. Oh, they look like angels. Yunjin. What are... Oh, okay. They look like... <laughs> They look like Crocs or something. G Idol. I like I like it. I like it. Psychers. We got a we got a little bit of a wild card in the middle. Kepler went with the angelic, but I like this. I like I love feathers. Absolutely love feathers. So I do like these outfits. They feel quite fun. But also like award show appropriate. Street Woman Fighter. This feels very fun. I do like it. So me. So me and hypen. Okay. Rise. Like, you see, I'm getting, I understand the vision. Oh, oh my God, Sohi, sorry. I, I'm accusing Sung Tan. It's not Sung Tan. <laughs> I feel so bad. I thought it was, I just saw it briefly. Don't crucify me. Sung Tan doesn't look too bad. So, what did they make this man wear? This can't be serious. This literally can't be serious. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I'm just biased, but he looks good. Like, it's like an oversized fit. Shotaro is killing it. Ooh. I actually don't mind Insok's outfit. Okay, well, Anton, at least the pants are like a little bit more dressed up, but there's no excuse for Sohi. What is he wearing? What does his shirt say? Harry, hurry, vision of a bright future. I kind of like it. Like, see, I get the vision. It's just so uh, Sohi's outfit. He looks like he just walked off of like the street, you know? Very, he looks a little too casual for me. Ooh, one Ben, we just skipped through him. Sorry, very handsome. Ooh, TXT. Ooh, we got some short action going on. Don't hate it at all. It's 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 nice. It's different from you know. It's it's one thing to just wear like a black suit. Sh that's fine. Um, it's not uh, illegal. But I like it. I like it. A, I like a little bit of. I like some interesting elements. So there we have it. You can share with me your favorite outfits in the comments. <laughs> Lastly, did Kepler copy Itzy stage? I've seen some talk around Kepler's Mama stage, which some people think is a little too similar. To Itzy's own 2021 mama stage. So let's 
see the evidence. So it's the impact. Let's look at the Kepler stage first. So they're all dressed in like leather with motorcycles surrounding them. They look scared. And then we start the fighting scenes. Oh my god. Okay, that does look really cool, I have to say. People are bringing up Itzy's stage. Let's look. So we have a gun to Yeji's head. Might have to blur that out. Oh, yeah. Then we have some fighting as well. I see the vision. I definitely see the vision. I could see like why you would be reminded of each other, right? There's even this screenshot going around showing side by side the similarities, you know, for Itzy mission, be a good kitty. And then for Kepler, mission complete. And then of course the fighting and the outfits. So in defense of this, there are people saying, you know, since some of you throw around the word plagiarism around like it's nothing, let me remind you that this is the concept Kepler did for this stage, that it's a video game concept. So the fighting fits in with that concept. But someone also brought up AOA in 2019. So you're basically saying that even Itzy copied them as well. Black fits, fighting guys. Well, this, this is also from an Mnet show as well, which we might get copyright claimed for. Now, of course, this is stuff that fans think are similar. But I'm curious to know what you think. Do you think it is a clear case of copy? copying or do you think at the core of it the concept is not original to begin with let me know in the comments we need to talk about espa karina's short skirt allegedly <laughs> i think it's so funny because this article literally says like espa fans criticize karina stylist over her allegedly short skirt like what do you mean allegedly it's short like it's, it's just a fact that it's short but i'll die so let's take a look at this short skirt in question so here we have this tiktok and we can see her safety shorts through the skirt without her having to move and that seems to be the beef that people have with this first of all when it comes to international sounds i don't know about canada sounds but when it comes to international national sounds the beef that they have with safety shorts is unmatched they see an inch of safety short it's the end of the world they get the point of safety shorts but a lot of people just think that safety shorts are so ugly that idols should just wear things longer to avoid needing the safety shorts to begin with or to avoid like having the safety shorts be almost an integral part of the outfit i would argue that's literally the point of the safety short to make sure people know that there's something there like to be so obvious so that people don't misunderstand i think that's inherently the point but i don't know so here we see it again we just see it's, it's a very short skirt, but let's see what people are saying. Safety shorts are there when the accidents happen to make female idols comfortable and not afraid of dancing. If you can see these shorts when she's standing, then the stylist clearly failed at their job. And since it's SM and we know how they used to dress Irene and how much she hated those two short skirts and dresses, looks like Karina is a new victim of that practice. The idea of safety shorts is to prevent any exposure when wearing short skirts, dresses, shorts, when bending or sitting or dancing and the wind blows etc they're supposed to stay hidden because they're not the focus main part of the outfit and are more like underwear either style the idols in longer shorts dress skirts or match the color of the outfit with the shorts so they don't stand out too much so i do have a little bit of a differing opinion just because of how egregious the use of safety shorts or just like undergarments in general are in k-pop sometimes i do feel like it's meant to be like look there's something under here you're not going to misunderstand or think that you could get a, a glimpse of anything it's clearly here they're black for a reason they could very well make things blend in but they don't and i feel like there's a reason behind that but i don't know but also i follow a couple of fashion people on tiktok and there there is a trend of micro skirts where literally the point is that it's so short like, and it's so funny because this actually popped up on my For You page this morning. <gasps> Video is currently unavailable. What do you mean? It was literally a girl like who bought a micro, a mini skirt. I was like, this is perfect to show off in my video today. How could it be unavailable? Oh my God. Anyways, micro skirt. Diesel, micro mini skirt. I honestly don't know where to begin with this one. So I'm just gonna put it on first. Um, why does this kind of work? Okay, little... that's not the micro skirt I'm thinking of. This. Oh, Izzy! The world's miniest skirt. We're gonna pair her with the world's longest boots. <laughs> Put socks on, because otherwise there's no way I'm getting out of this alive. I love her. Oh my god, even the miniest skirt in the world is not mini enough. Like, you can... What? So maybe it's just purposefully a micro skirt. Like that's the point of a micro skirt where you see the crotch. I don't know. I don't know. But let me know what you think and your personal stance on safety shorts.
This isn't the first time a group is being called out for having way too many photo cards. We've seen this previously with Seventeen and NCT Dream and now NMIX. NMIX is the latest K-pop group to draw controversy for extremely high photo card numbers. So again, to reiterate, we have NCT Dream here with their ISTJ. Look at the amount of photo cards. So this is actually from their previous album, A Midsummer and Mix's Dream. There are allegedly a whopping 150 photo cards per member, which essentially would mean 900 photo cards in total if you collected all of them. Here we have a Hewon template and there's, you know, a lot of people are going to say these are pre-order benefits. Not everybody collects absolutely every single photo card, but it's still interesting to look into. Here's what some people are saying. The whole PC thing went out of hand a long time ago. At this point, nothing surprises me anymore. As long as fans are willing to pay for this, nothing is going to change. Are we surprised though? Companies saw how fans go crazy over photo cards and decided to use that to their advantage. Saw a trending post the other day about how they did over 90 fan signs this year. Poor girls. So let's end off with K-pop shenanigans, which are basically fun little things that have happened in K-pop recently. So we have Blackpink to host first ever virtual reality K-pop concert. I think that could be fun. Pixie Sua is going viral for this shirt that she wore. Eat my, eat me, eat my finger. <laughs> but it's crossed out though. There's a, there's a line through it. Let's move on to my Spotify wrapped. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. So let's do it. So here is my Spotify wrapped of 2023. Let's just screen record this. Oh my God, I almost forgot. Three, two, one, go. Hello, Angelina. It's wrapped time. Ready? Let's do this. 2023 was a feast for your ears. You listened to 12 genres. How did your tastes stack up? It's like a little sandwich here, okay? Come on, give it to me. K-pop. Norway. There's Norway. <laughs> so we have K-pop, then we have pop, then we have K-pop girl group, urban Latino. I don't have K-pop three times in here. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I don't know though. Left right, left right. What? Okay, let me, okay. This year your listening took you to places and one place listened to just like you, Davis, USA. Let me pause this. People there are far more likely to be fans of 80s, new jeans, and XT. What's going on in Davis, USA? Where is that? Is that like California? What does that mean? Uh, do you ever see like those memes where it's like Americans expect everyone to know where everything in the u.s is like what state is that i don't know where this is it looks california i don't know why not say the the pro i was gonna say problem why not say the <laughs> why not say the state though just say anyways okay okay wait 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 wait, wait. You played 873 songs in 2023 and there was one that really connected mm -hmm. Speed Drive. Okay, your top song was Speed Drive from the Barbie album by Charlie XEX. You played it 92 times this year, starting on July 13th, and it still sounds perfect. It does. Speed Drive? Okay, first of all, the fact that it's so short, of course, I played it so many times because it ended so quickly. So I'm just like, I need more, I need more, I need more. That is the trick. You know, I didn't really buy it at first. And people were like, these songs are so short to encourage you to listen to it more. I didn't believe it. Now I do. Because look, this song is like, I don't even think this song is two minutes long. <laughs> or it's like two minutes and something. It's very, very short. I love it. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> But you had room in your heart for more than one favorite, you romantic you, of course. It's another Barbie movie soundtrack. <gasps> My top songs, I just saw Enrique. Okay, so, oh, this is so not surprising. So we have Speed Drive, of course. Then we have Barbie Dreams from 5050 and Kali. Escape. <laughs> I don't know why Enrique is on here. There's no way. There's he was literally in my top five last week, last year. There's no way. Please, you're literally kidding. There's no way Escape is number three. Then La Corriente by Bad Bunny, and then Super Shy by New Jeans. I feel like Super Shy should be a little bit higher, but that's just me. That's. I, 
Do you remember every end of month review I'm always telling you guys? Or should I save this for the end of month review? I'm putting it in the news show, who cares? I always say that like sometimes Western songs feel like they're counted differently. Because sometimes I'll, I literally have never listened to Frank Ocean's Bad Religion in my life. I only played it once. Didn't even listen to it. Played it once. Not even fully. To look at the lyrics because I was doing a news show. Tell me why it's appeared in every single playlist that I click on. Tell me why it's literally appeared in my top 10 songs when I look on other sites. Something fishy is going on, but anyways. My top 100 songs, add to the library. I'm so excited to go through that with you guys afterwards, but anyways. Okay, wait. Uh, that's Kai. Oh my god. I'm okay, time is a construct, but we kept track anyways. You listened for 14,275 minutes. That ni That's nine days nonstop. That doesn't seem like a lot. You peaked on May 4th at 185 minutes, and now you're in the top 25% of listeners worldwide. You oh, this is going too fast. My goodness. <laughs> And you were in the top 25% of listeners worldwide. Nice. Okay, you listened to 475 artists this year, but one came out on top. Any guesses? Well, you're playing their song. It has to be New Jeans. It's me again. I'm back. Say hello to your... <laughs> good say hello to your top artist new jeans you're a top three percent fan and you spend 775 minutes together that is so special <laughs> oh my god who was it last year i don't even remember who it was last year it's so i really feel like super shy should have been higher and a lot of other new jeans songs should have been higher but i don't know anyways <laughs> You had something special with your top artists. Here's how you spent your time with them across the year. Oh, yeah. Turn back. Okay, so obviously number one is New Jeans. Your peak listening month was July. Oh, my of course, 80s has to be here. So number two peak listening month was June. Number three, Peach PRC. I've been loving her releases so much. So I'm not surprised that she's my number three artist. Peak listening month, February. Espa? Oh my god, Norway! I wasn't expecting them. Like, I do remember specifically listening to them quite a little bit, but I do. Oh my god, hi. <laughs> In June, apparently. So here are my top five artists, New Jeans. Funny how my top five artists are like, like I, I, you'd expect, I don't know. I just feel like if it's like your top five artists, it should kind of be similar to your top songs, but it's not at all. Well, I mean, New Jeans and Bad Bunny, but otherwise. So of course, number one, New Jeans, number two, ATs, number three, Peach PRC, and number four, Bad Bunny, with number five being Espo, which is a little unexpected because it was a little bit later in the year where I... Well, spicy, spicy came, well, spicy came out five months ago, didn't it? Never mind. I guess it's not surprising. Time really is not real. Hold up, someone's on the other line. Okay. Bunnies and Spotify listeners, 2023 was lovely and amazing because you guys were there with us. Thank you so, so much for enjoying New Jeans music in 2023. We are so excited to spend the amazing 2024 with you all. Please look forward to our future releases. 여러분 다 함께라서 행복한 2023년이 될수 있었던 것 같아요. 앞으로 저희 New Jeans 많이 사랑해 주세요. Thank you. I can't believe they did that for me. <laughs> The way you listened this year makes you a hero. Or maybe we should say Aunt, not Taylor. Not Taylor Swift? What? <laughs> what does this mean? Oh, I don't get it. Luminary, there's a spark in you and your listening shows it. You play light upbeat music more than others. Bet you're fun at parties. Hmm. I'm 
<laughs> okay, that was really fun. Honestly, I pay for Spotify for the adrenaline, the skit, not adrenaline, for the feeling I get to do this. Like, I don't get it. Like, it's literally 13 minutes of my life. I don't know how edited down this is, but I love it. I live for it. I don't know. So here we have all these fancy little graphics. Which one should I post? I don't love purple. Maybe the black or the I'm think I'm I think I'm gonna go with the orange and I'll share the orange. I was filming the podcast with Audrey the other day and I just kept bringing up new jeans and I and I I knew it. I felt it in my heart that they were my they were my top something at least. Oh, I just I love their music. I love them so much and it's so weird to me that it started off with me not being on board with new jeans, I thought I just I didn't like their sound. I thought it was just like I like it's just gonna be like another like SM adjacent type thing, and <laughs> and I'm not feeling it. It is so funny how how the the turns have tabled. Oh my god, we almost forgot to go through my my top songs. Beep, 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 beep. Of course, Speed Drive. We'll go through this a little bit. Okay. Speed Drive, Barbie Dreams Escape, La Corriente, Super Shy, This Love. Oh my God, Hyorin was so close. Loved You Before, Peach PRC, Rockstar by Psykers, ASAP New Jeans, Beso, Perfect for You, Me Porto Bonita, OMG, Sweet Juice Left Right, Bitch Better Have My Money. That's a little surprising. Bouncy, Ladi Dadi. Lottie Dottie is a replacement song. It has no business being here because it's the Japanese version and the Korean version is superior. But it's 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 like it's a filler song because the Korean version ceases to exist on this platform. Ditto, of course. F you goodbye. Be with you. Fast forward. Greedy gal. Get it. Rover. Teenage dirtbag. Peach PRC. You race me. Want us. Queen card. Love or die. Halizia. Not on preview. <laughs> on preview. <laughs> Tricky house, ready for love, of course. Alone, ng ng, like a girl does. That's quite new. ETA. This is always so fun to go through every single time. Karma. Taylor Swift is here. Sherry. Sherry is a Swifty now. Oh. No, I said Sherry. Calm down. <laughs> Rewrite the stars. Oh my god. Icons hot issue. The girls, of course. So many Barbie songs on here. Another Enrique song. <laughs> stop okay another in re <laughs> i might as well be one of my top artists i guess i guess i was lying paranoia to die for Ike. money money <sighs> well that's fun okay so i'm going to make a 2023 playlist of my top 100 songs so if you're interested in checking them all out i've done it every single year since 2021 i think and that is officially it for my spotify wrap but i do reckon we're gonna end the video here these are the lovely individuals who help support my channel on a monthly basis it means the world to me thank you so much as for me i'm gonna get going so i'll see you guys next time bye